Hello everyone, welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. This is a very special interview. This, this film took me back when I was little to Gumby, the Blockheads, and Pokey. Some of you old school people, you know about Claymation. Well, they're definitely on the Claymation and they've kicked it up a couple of, maybe 18 notches or so. We'd say about 18, between 18 and 21. <laughs> okay, well tell everyone your names and about the film. Okay, well I'll start off. My name's Mark Burton. I'm a co-writer and co-director of the Shaun the Sheep movie. Um, I don't know if some of your viewers will know the TV show, um, but it's the movie version of the TV show. Yeah, and my name's Richard Starzak, also a co-director writer of uh, Shaun the Sheep the movie. And I devised Shaun the Sheep the TV series. And we've made about 140 episodes, so it felt like a good time to make a film. I was going to ask you that. What um, inspired you guys to now, okay, this is the time to make the film? Well, Sean, Sean's become uh, popular globally. He's, he, uh, he plays in about 100 and, uh, 170 territories world, worldwide. And um, the, the format of the TV show, if you haven't seen a TV show, are like little mini movies. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're shot very cinematically. They're told that there's no dialogue, uh, which, which is also true of the film. And uh, it just felt the time was right to tell longer form stories uh, because the characters had started to develop an emotional depth that we thought would work well in the cinema. Mm -hmm. So there. Right. Now, you also just cinematic. I mean, you have, there's a couple of scenes. I mean, the farmer, the camper is going off trail, and he's like floating in gravity. How did you guys do that? Because that looked real as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm watching like, huh? That's interesting. So that, that's the skill of our animators. Our animators are brilliant. They're like they're like the actors of the stop motion animation world. Mm -hmm. But we, we do cheat a bit. We we use these things called rigs, and they are like um, basically sort of metal devices that you can attach the puppets to, so they can be in mid air, and um, the animators can animate them frame by frame. And then after you've done the shot, of course, we use computers to clean up, clean out the rigs so you don't see them. So no puppets were actually hurt by being put in a speeding caravan for real, don't worry, it was all done using mm -hmm. um, stop frame skills. Okay, now the particular story. How did you guys come up with the story that the sheep and the dog, they're going to town to find their friend? Well, I think it's important to, uh, in the series, they're always based on the farm, which is fine, but we thought for a movie we've got to take them somewhere exciting, somewhere new somewhere different and the city seemed the opposite of the farm so that seemed right mm -hmm. uh, and we and the, uh, the idea was that you always do in films if the characters are trying to find something you put as many obstacles in the way as possible right now the scene with the silence of the lambs whose idea was to put that in there because that <laughs> just yeah. I just had a I hurt my stomach hurt because I laughed so hard well I think yeah, we I mean uh, we uh, we there's me and Richard uh, come up with a lot of the jokes and the story team come up with a lot of the jokes. So um, uh, where that particular joke came from, I can't even really entirely remember, but I'm going to claim credit. I think it was my joke. But anyway, the um, <laughs> but the uh, the point was that we uh, you know we, we were thinking that from we tell the story from the animal's point of view. And I guess if you're an animal and you get taken to a kind of like a you know an animal rescue place, it's like going to San Quentin Prison, you know. So that was kind of the the idea we were playing around with there. So well, we hope that's one reference maybe. Um, that uh, kids won't get. Um, on the whole, yeah. you know, as you've seen the movie, most of the jokes, most of the humour, it's something that can be enjoyed by adults and children alike. I think it's it's very universal. It is. Question: The turtle. What did he do <laughs> to get in there? Because if you took the pan, I'm like, I'm trying to count how many years. Five, he, ten. What did this turtle do? He's been there a long time. He's a he's yeah. a knifer. Um, <laughs> He yeah uh, he just got, he just made the mistake of uh, of uh, you know, being out on his own uh, without um, being supervised and uh, the nasty villain who's the animal containment officer who's maybe a bit overzealous with the way he catches animals he's a bit of a bully he just took him in so uh, he's waiting for his owner to come and get yeah. him probably so it was always trying to run away from situations that's what it was somebody did also ask uh, I thought it was great somebody said um, how did the goldfish um, become a stray. That was a lovely idea. <laughs> was a stray head. goldfish. How did, but yeah, how did the goldfish do that? And then learn the harmonica. I'm like, They've all got stories. We're going to do spin-offs for all of them. Don't worry. So we'll explore. I hope story. you guys bring those to the States or at least YouTube or something because I would love to see their backstories. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'd love to see all their backstories. Now, um, you also do a scene in there about um, with, um, I'll say, how things go viral. The guy with the blonde hair gets a 
change, and then everybody's just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. How, why did you put that in the in the film? Yes, the, uh, the idea was that the main idea was that the the farmer became an instant success as a hairdresser. We thought that was a very funny idea that, given that he shears sheep, he now becomes this quite sort of metrosexual hairdresser, and uh, that that was the main idea. And we thought, well, actually, the, that does happen these days. You know, people become famous literally in 10 minutes through through going viral. So we weren't trying to be modern or trendy. It just seemed to fit the idea very well. And let's talk about memory loss because yeah. um, that's a very interesting part to put in the film. And it's uh -huh. not, um, not to be cliche, it's not beat, you're not beaten over the head how important it is to, if you hit your head, please get checked out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, there is that message and we work with a charity because I, I knew a charity in the UK called Headway which does deal with head injury. Um, and so we wanted to have a serious message at the end. Um, if you get a bang on the head, you know, it can have an impact and so on. But actually, you should be saying that the story is fun. You know, we, do we play it for laughs uh, and sensitively. And um, it's really a, the story of somebody, um, you know, like having a, a, a friend or a parent figure that, that loses their memory, doesn't know who you are anymore, can be very, uh, you know, um, upsetting. And I think there's, there's that in the story as well. You know, you really want them to come back together and get his memory back. Yes. Yeah. And it is slapstick humour. You can't avoid... The whole point of slapstick humour is you kind of laugh at other people's misfortunes. Their misfortunes are falling over and getting hit on the head sometimes. And I think we treat it sensitively, though. How did you not get... Because that's clay, right? I mean, uh, or, anim, or... Not entirely, no. Okay. you got one in your, you got Sean in your hand there. He's oh. actually kind of a mixture of um, sort of resin. This is... This is his head's resin. hard. It's a resin. It's got latex ears. We use plasticine for subtlety, for like eyelids and mouth shapes mm -hmm. and things, for expression. How do you get them to cry? Uh, <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, oh, we just, they do that. We don't hurt We just, we just threaten them. <laughs> so we, we, uh, we, um, we use uh, stuff like a, a glycerin that, um, that you can almost animate. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a jelly that's quite stiff and you can actually move it along so you can animate it. Right. Um, but it, so it looks like water and so it looks like tears. All right, now share with the, you can't leave the interview, share with us the KY jelly story. <laughs> oh uh, okay. Um, only if you like, only if you want to. Okay, in the early days um, uh, of Ardman, uh, when I was a junior there, we had, I, I was often going out and getting the various supplies we needed for, uh, for, for animation. One of them, we, we needed something that would resemble water and something. We also needed some pumps to pump ink through water to, to create cloud effects. So uh, the bosses of the company sent me to uh, medical supplies and I had to buy 30 tubes of KY jelly and two irrigation syringes, neither of which I knew what were for. I mean, I had no idea what, what they were for, so I just asked for them, and the guy said, are you having a party? <laughs> I, 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 had, I had no idea what he meant. <laughs> I said, no. And uh, I took it all back and explained. Uh, it created a great laugh. Yeah. Oh, did someone explain to you about, did yeah. you get the, okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fun times, fun, fun times. Don't worry, we should say it's a family movie despite some of the stories. That yeah. Are yeah, very family oriented, you guys. Extremely family yeah. we were oriented. Gonna, we were going to have a tie in uh, with KY Jelly, um, it's a commercial tie in, but we got shafted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say jokes like I know, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's very dry. <laughs> very shafted, you're dry, very shafted. <laughs> I'll quit with the jokes, you guys. Now, some of you are wonder, probably wondering, well, why isn't Sadiq sitting in the chair? Well, there's a reason why. I have special guests in the chair. Dispense with the paperwork we have. You go to the film, you'll see. Farmer, the villain. Ooh. But he has a cool, what, would you, what kind of gun would you call it? Do well, you it's, like a, uh, it's like a taser. It's like, you know, it's it's like a super taser. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, he kind of probably got it off the internet illegally, you know, and he and uh, it's, it's it's banned in sixty countries. But he, he's a bit of a bully, you know. So yeah, yeah that's the kind of gun. If you need it, you want it. You don't ever want to need it and not have it. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Bitzer. We call him Bitzer because he's a he's a mongrel, so it's bits of this and bits of that. And his he's, he's quite mischievous, actually, Timmy. He's he's uh, he looks very cute, but he can. Uh, and he makes a good backpack. He makes a very good backpack, that's true. Yeah. It's a very good backpack. You have to watch the movie to find, to find out how he does that. That's right. You have to go see the film. I mean, it's for all, I'm serious, all 
all ages. Gentlemen, thank you so very thank you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.